Hey girlies, welcome or welcome back to the Imani Forrester channel. As you know, Imani Forrester is the author of 30 Reasons Why Men Deserve Nothing, which you can find in the description box below. I'm Shanice and y'all, here we go again. So here's an update on the resilient Jenkins family. There is a lot that has come out about their situation and it's worse than we thought. The couple Andrew and Stephanie Jenkins apparently did a live where many viewers joined to ask questions and to make suggestions to help their living situation. Apparently the Jenkins parents very much intend to use internet notoriety to subsidize their lifestyle. They are also planning on having more children. Whenever Andrew was given suggestions to get a real job, he staunchly refused. We also found out that the children have been living with lice and fleas. So the sanitation situation isn't up to par either. This is just really sad on all fronts for the children involved. And even more recently than that, just today, we're now finding out that Andrew has at least one other child outside of this relationship, a child who he abandoned when they were two years old. The mother of the child came out and exposed him for his neglect and the fact that he is in contempt of paying his child support. So there is a lot more to the situation. This is just all around really sad. And we can see exactly why this dude doesn't want to get a real job. He is ducking and dodging the child support he rightfully owes. And this is exactly what I was talking about in my last video. So many of these ex-wives are unfit to be heads of household and are perfectly content leading their families straight off a cliff. The fact that this deadbeat felt comfortable sleeping at night, leaving his children in a situation like this, told me all I needed to know about his character. It doesn't surprise me that he has previous children, or at least a previous child, whom he abandoned and doesn't support. And yesterday, I had a video on Pick Me Mothers, and I believe Stephanie definitely qualifies. I've collected a series of TikTok videos from creators who have been researching into this Jenkins family situation. Situation, so let's get into these. Hi. <laughs> Since we're on here speaking about the resilient Jenkins, actually, he has more than one son. Um, hi, I'm the first baby mama. I'm absolutely <laughs> um, embarrassed the fact mm -hmm. that that's my sperm donor. Um, I will not be posting my child on here because y'all not going to know. Um, but my son is almost 12. Um, since everybody wants to kind of chime in, um, that man that everybody's saying they have two loving parents um, walked out of his son's life when he was two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen his son um, since he was five. And that's because I reached out to him uh, to come to his kindergarten graduation. I wanted to post this clip um, in the video that I posted a few minutes ago, but I completely forgot, so I'm putting it here. Um, and go follow her, Nails by Arlita. Like, you have to watch this video. Everything she says is mind blown. And, you know, she's the kind of mom that we should be supporting. That's the kind of mom that raises good young men. So go follow her, go watch the video. And I think it's time for us to cancel the resilient jenkins what do you think let me the plot thickens the resilient jenkins the husband seems to be lying and hiding another child the baby mama of this child came out last night and let us know what was going on with that um pretty much she was his first baby mama um we have not seen this child because this child is with her and so when the wife and them said that he came into the relationship with two children no he already had three and this baby mama is already saying that she doesn't know he could have more but pretty much he owes child support he is in contempt of that he's missed the court date for that um and also the city of portland the court system is looking for him um, and this gives a lot of clarity into what was being said in the live last night um, with the resilient Jenkins. He was saying, when people are saying like, oh, why don't you get maybe a night job or just like giving other ideas of what he could do because he was very focused on having, doing, starting his own detailing business, um, car detailing business, as well as starting, as well as only doing Uber Eats. And some people said, oh, well, you could do like Lyft or you could do Instacart. And he said, his response to that, he's like, well, that's like having a W-2 job. And some people asked him, why is having a W-2 job bad? And he's like, well, it's not bad, but you're not going to get like more than $30 an hour for a W-2 job. He then also saying that he's not going to get a W-2 job because they're not going to pay him what he's worth. And I know for a fact that there's plenty of W-2 jobs that, may, that give you 
more than $30 for an hour. I mean, I don't know about for what he could possibly go for, but I'm just saying that that's not true. Um, it seems like they're very set on, and the husband is very set on doing what he wants to do and raising the money way he wants to, which I mean, like, yes, obviously that's your right, but they're not focused on really maximizing the money that they could get for the ch their child. He's like, I don't have to work nights if I don't want to work nights. And of course he doesn't, he doesn't, but night shifts pay more, which means that you, you and your family would have more money and then could get out of that one bedroom. But also because he doesn't have a W-2, he doesn't, you know, have to anything to the IRS. And then also his earnings can't be relinquished for the child support that he owes. So yeah, that was quite a development. So we have gotten an update this whole resilient Jakin situation. So the first baby mother has come forward. Yes, that is right. Andrew Jenkins' first baby mother has come forward, and in fact, he is a deadbeat. Also, this is the first baby mother. This is not the mother of the child that is in that home. Actually, this is a child before that, and they are in fact siblings. He hasn't paid child support in years, and he hasn't seen his son in years. And Stephanie saying that he only came into that relationship with one child is a lie, because he has multiple children before he was in a relationship with Stephanie. In fact, he could possibly have three children outside of Stephanie's. This whole situation is a mess, guys. But as always, let's just go ahead and talk down in the comments and let me know how you guys are feeling about this whole resilient J. King situation and the new and the first baby mom coming forward and saying that Andrew Jenkins is in fact a deadbeat. So let's just get ahead and chat in the comments. I will talk to you guys later. Okay, bye. So everyone's still talking about this whole resilient Jenkins situation. To be honest, bunk beds is not going to fix this problem. The only thing that's going to fix this problem is if the other parents of those children could go ahead and get their kids. Um, Andrew's son that is staying with him, the, that mother, I don't know how Andrew got possession of that child, but I do know that at one point he was with his mother. And I don't know if I'm, I'm just assuming the mother does not know the conditions that he was he's in until now. And this is my call to her. Just get, get your son, get your son and just get your son. So Stephanie has two other kids he had before she met um, Andrew Jenkins. So the one father, I know the child with the dark hair, her father is incarcerated, but they're also married. Of the little girl with the dark hair, I don't know, the family, if you guys can, just get her. Just get her. The other daughter with the lighter hair, she has a dad too. I'm not sure if, her, I, I don't know the situation with that, but I can only hope that now that this this thing has gotten viral he sees this and he sees the condition that his child is in and just gets his child and of course it's going to be hard just be helpful to just have some of the kids removed from that situation unfortunately this cps isn't going to do anything because the, the kids aren't being beat the kids are eating anyway so let me know how you guys are feeling about this whole resilient junky situation um do you feel like bumpins are going to cure this or do you feel like the other parents just need to get their kids regardless just let me know how you guys are feeling about this whole situation down below in the comments i will talk to you guys later okay bye y'all yesterday we were talking about the taboo of what is and isn't the resilient jenkins and since then two women have come out and said hey this isn't his only kid he doesn't have just one biological kid and one on the way. There have been two women. So he has two other children. One, the first uh, woman who had his very first child. That child is almost 12 years old or is 12 years old. Anyway, I'm going to tag her because I don't remember the name of the other uh, mother. While they're both equivocally important. Um, she said that, that the resilient Jenkins father the one the, the one living in that household now walked out on her and her son when he was only two years old and didn't see that child again until his kindergarten graduation that is so incredibly sad so sad all right so um y'all go do some research on your own 
We will reconvene later this afternoon. I love you all. Have a phenomenal day. Do something kind. Do the good thing, okay? Love you, bye. And not that good thing, a good thing. Not Andrew Alexander Jenkins of the Resilient Jenkins family. The husband has an older child that is 12. That is the reason why he won't work because he owes child support for that child. Oh, oh, okay. I don't want a W-2 if it's not paying me $32 an hour. Yeah, because you got to pay back all that back child support for your 12-year-old that you haven't seen since she was five. Stephanie, I'm going to need you to, like I said, step your cookies up for these children. Y'all have a breeding kink. I'm going to call it. You have a breeding kink. Andrew failed him somebody that's willing to pop out as many babies as possible. Okay? I don't know how he ended up with custody of his second child. But um, Andrew don't want to work because Andrew don't want to pay child support. Andrew has a, a, a 12-year-old he ain't seen since he was five. Okay? Okay. That's why he won't work. That is embarrassing. For Stephanie to sit there, oh, well, God is going to do this and God is going to provide. God is going to always provide. Absolutely. But when you're doing wrong by children, they ask nothing of you but to be loved by you. And you discard them because you have to be financially responsible for them. No, you're not going to get blessed for that, shawty. And the fact that, oh, well, he works all these hours under the table. Under the table. That's what he does. Oh, if they're not paying me 32 an hour. How can you, as a woman, stand by him? What lies have he fed you, Stephanie? What is going on here? What did he tell you? How many more other children does he have that he didn't tell you about? Miss out here. Oh, he only had the one. He had the two. He had the two. And it's very telling that the only child in the house that does have a sort of a bed before before the Amazon wish list, before everything else, was the child y'all two had together. All of the other children from previous relationships slept on the floor. But y'all child together slept in a bed. And how you're clearing out space for the new baby to have a crib to least sleep home. Well, originally, the other three from previous relationships slept on the floor. The other two that Stephanie said had inferior genes. Her two daughters, because I'm assuming because they're not of mixed race. But the one with superior genes, the mixed race child. Mm. I think I've heard all I needed to hear. Um, my My initial videos about all of this... Null and void beside those babies getting off that floor. These people, this is why I feel like there should be some type of like mental evaluation before you have kids. She is choosing her husband over those children. She is putting him first. She does not care about really anything else besides making him happy. And that's sad. That is sad. And it, it, I mean, she, she clothes them. She feeds them, you know, like regular people. But at the core of it, I don't think she really care at all. Everyone's talking about Resilient Jenkins and how the father doesn't want to get a real job because he doesn't want a W-2 because he owes money in back child support. And he's probably thinking once his child turns 18, he will be off the hook for that child support and that is not accurate. Now this may differ from state to state, but my dad did the same thing. He refused to get a real job thinking once we were 18, he'd be off the hook. Joke's on him, he is not off the hook. I'm almost 36 years old and the state is still coming after my dad for back child support. My mom even asked the judge to close the case and they refused to. Okay, y'all, so the family of nine, what is it, a family of too many damn people? I'm watching her videos because I'm trying to see, like, the living situation. Why one of her videos she mentioned is Sunday and I try to make sure all my kids bathe on Sunday. What about the rest of the damn week? Is they only bathing once a week? And y'all was correct. She got her kids sleeping in the kitchen next to the counters, next to the refrigerator, down there in the refrigerator. Absolutely not. And y'all over here buying her Amazon wish list. Why? Ain't shit she need but a new damn place to stay for her and her kids because it's already crowded in there. The bed is literally by the refrigerator. 
y'all are over here buying Amazon wish lists. Clearly, money is not the problem. I think she just wants to be selfish and stay in a one bedroom because if you could afford a damn Xbox in your room, you have it, honey. Stop trying to get on here and use your kids. You're using your kids. <sighs> Ain't no other way around it. Ain't no other way around it. Mm -mm. Argue with your mama. Baby, even rent assistance and uh, low income has stipulations on how many individuals can live in a single dwelling based upon the rooms. And six kids, one on the way, two adults in a one bedroom apartment, single family, whatever the fuck it is. Nah, nah. Play with somebody else. Then not to mention y'all got a PS5, but the kids sleeping on the floor in the kitchen. Mm -mm. y'all can convince yourself in however whatever capacity y'all want to that that's okay the kids look clean the kids look happy they don't know no fucking better and boy i know we have some struggles like pork and beans and hot dogs but shit that's not ideal for them kids and y'all know it is y'all cool seize him cut his throat stop so here's an update on the resilient jenkins family um, so the mother of his first child has came out saying that he walked out of their kid's life when he was only two years old and he's 12 now. And do you know why he doesn't want to do a YouTube job? It's not because he deserves better. It's because he'll have to pay child support and he would rather be a fucking deadbeat to every child he has so he doesn't have to pay child support to the first one. And I bet you the woman that he's making kids with now knows that he's a fucking deadbeat and is still choosing to reproduce with him. Like how stupid can you be and the fact that they want us to support their lifestyle like hell no stop supporting them stop telling them what they're doing is okay stop buying them their fucking amazon wish list they're two able-bodied parents who can go out there and both work so they can provide for their kids people do it all of the time stop using us to feed your lifestyle the six, seven kids in the one bedroom situation, I feel like everybody who is hanging her on the cross, I feel like you need to pipe down a little bit because when you really think about it, your mom, your dad, they was out here doing things on 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 the flip on the flip 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 flip. Like if you be honest, like some of us are are a product of single mothers or single fathers. Like let's be real, some of our parents were not responsible. <laughs> Some of our parents did not know how to financially do things properly, okay? Now, us as adults now, we can pick up on some stuff. But I think y'all are being a little bit too liberal. Just like when your mom was beating on you for no reason, and she was just mad one day because she was a single mom coming off work, and you didn't clean up the closet good enough, so she beat you, it didn't click for her. She thought beating you would help just her day, period. And it didn't help. Um, it just kind of made you get tortured. So you got to give people grace, okay? Give people grace just like how you give your parents grace when they was raising you, okay? I think everybody's being too liberal here. Okay, let the, I feel like, just me personally, like I said, I grew up with people living like that. I knew people who was living like that, okay? And it wasn't a big deal, but they ended up upgrading when they had the chance, okay? I know people who was living in Blue Cross Blue Shield shelters, you know what I'm saying? And the parents was really going through, you know? They really was going through with some stuff. And the kids had to really shack up in a one bedroom for real. And it was all free. Like, they just didn't have enough to pay rent. You do know there are genuinely poor people out here. Like, you have to stop being so entitled. You got to stop thinking that you're the only type of people out here living in America. And I feel like if anybody posts a video like that, I really think you should just pray for them or try to get them some help. That's what you should do. Because obviously, if she has seven, six kids living in a one bedroom with a man, she don't, she's not, her priorities are not there. And she is not processing how to properly handle situations. So she needs some type of assistance or growth over time to realize, I should have probably did this or that. Like, you have to realize certain people, they probably weren't raised like you. They probably didn't click yet. You know what I'm saying? You got to wait to that click. Like, obviously, nothing clicked for her to, if she had the money to elevate. You know what I'm saying? Like you, I, you just shouldn't be judging people because sometimes they are, they were like really ignorant in that time. And I don't mean ignorant in a bad way. I mean, not knowing. I don't think your classes or you hate poor people just for saying, Hey, y'all had enough people living in that one bedroom. You didn't need to create another. And this is coming from someone who lived in a situation with five people in a one bedroom. My mom got the room. Me and my three siblings would sleep on a pullout couch in the living room. So when I saw the initial video that went viral, I wasn't coming from a place of judgment. I really wanted to know, man, how did they find themselves in this situation? So I scroll all the way down to 2022 when she first started doing co content. 
And when she met this man, she had two children. He had one child. So they're instant family of five. And they were living in that same one bedroom apartment. Okay. Those three babies were sleeping in the living room. And guess what? Her and her man actively trying to have another baby. I think that's the part that throws people off. It wasn't an, it wasn't a oopsie. It wasn't an accident. No, they plan to have this baby. And nine times out of 10, the one that she's pregnant with now, they plan for that one as well, but they didn't plan to upgrade their space. That's the part that's frustrating. That's the part that I can't get behind. And I'm actually happy for her that she was able to kind of get this following and hopefully she seizes this opportunity and makes something of it and makes the best of it and is able to change their financial situation. But I don't know if changing the financial situation is really going to change the living situation because I've also seen a video where she said their dream is to own a tiny home. And it's like, babe, she got an extra large family. Y'all can't fit in no tiny home. Not right now, at least. Not right now. So I really do hope the best for her and her family. And I've seen people say, well, at least they got a roof over their head. And I really do understand that but the quality of the roof matters as well. Again, this is coming from someone who's been in a situation like that. We've shared homes with my aunts and cousins. I literally slept on a couch all the way up to college. I didn't get my own room until college. And I'm not saying that she needs to have a four, five, six bedroom home to have her big family, but two or three bedrooms could help. My issue with this family of six going on seven is not that the dad is sleeping in the king size bed, is that the dad is sleeping at all. Because what do you mean you have six members in your family, including yourself, another on the way, and you're, you're sleeping? At, at most, you should be sitting. You should maybe be taking a cat nap for three hours a day and working the other 21 possibly working two or three jobs. Don't get me started on the PlayStation, but the fact that the man, not a man, this person is sleeping at all. This is when you should be on drugs to remain awake. Y'all gave the lady who had her kids sleeping on foam on the floor and in the microwave 65,000 followers. I got pregnant at 17 and my kid has never slept on foam in the kitchen. My kid has never gone without a Halloween costume. It didn't take me half a year to buy shoes for my kid. This is what y'all support. Be fucking for real. Now you've probably all seen videos of that family who's like collecting kids like they're Pokemon. Uh, they currently have four kids in a one bedroom and I guess they're trying to beat that record because she's pregnant with their fifth in the, in the one bedroom. And it's not like a great living situation. Uh, the kids are, it's like the kids are sleeping in the living room on the floor. It's like, it's a worse living situation than the grandparents on Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Okay. And so you see these videos and then other people are making videos and like leaving comments being like, don't judge them and like i'm not here to judge so i'm not gonna say anything okay um well i am also not here to judge necessarily but i can do two things at once so i don't know why you're like thinking you're better than me because you can't multitask i wouldn't really be bragging about that so um i will judge um because yeah i don't i think that the kid oh i think the kids should have beds okay and the kids are sleeping in the living room of the one bedroom. The parents are sleeping in the bedroom. Naturally, I guess. So the kids are right by the front door. Uh, which just seems weird to me. Like, so if somebody breaks into your house, your first line of defense is your 700 kids. And then they get to the, the parents. I don't know. That doesn't really seem like the way it should be, in my opinion. And they had like an Amazon wish list at one point. And at the beginning, they didn't even have beds for their kids on there. I'm like, I think you should have beds for your kids on this wish list. If you're asking for things, I think you should start with beds, beds for the kids. The bar is at the floor, okay? Your kids should have beds, make normal beds so they can live a normal life. Um, and so yeah, their living situation isn't great. It's quite cluttered, which probably isn't their fault because it's a one bedroom and there's so many of them. There's like so many of them. They're like max capacity, okay? Like, I don't know, like, is there like there's got to be like does cps get involved like i don't know i don't know how like if there's like a limit for how many kids you can have in like one space like because they're like choosing to do it like that was like a choice like they're choosing to just like do this and this i don't know anyways 
So it had me thinking. So they're in the creator fund, I'm sure, probably now. And they're probably going to start making a bunch of money on TikTok, which is great. Like, I'm rooting for them. I'm, like, rooting for them to get their kids, like, beds. Like, you know, like, I want their kids to have a normal life because I bet the kids are going to grow up to be very anxious. Um, so I want them to have a normal life. But it makes me wonder, yeah, like, they're probably getting a lot of, like, hate views. And, like, because it feels like rage baiting, like their content does. Okay? So they're going to be making a bunch of money, and I bet they're just not going to stop. Like, I bet they're just going to keep having kids in this one bedroom because it's making them, like, so much money. You know? I don't know. But I'm rooting for them. I'm not following them, and I'm hoping that their videos don't show up on my For You page because it kind of gives me anxiety. Like, you know, I'm rooting for them from afar. I'm rooting for the kids to get beds. Get your kids beds. Get them beds. Maybe move them out of the living room, you know? maybe you the parents go into the living room the kids get the bedroom and then that's my that's my advice okay bye okay so i've been seeing the resilient jenkins on my fyp for a little bit and specifically it came on my fyp because now they're in legal trouble and they could be homeless have you guys seen this family of six that lives in a one bedroom apartment let's talk about it so basically this woman uh, made an account it's called resilient jenkins and she made an account to kind of show people how she is expecting a child and she has three children and her and her husband live in a one bedroom apartment she basically shows her life cleaning it and you know just basic life of being in the home a lot of people have given them backlash because they have a ps5 they also have um two big screen tvs and it just seems very materialistic but also a lot of people were for them because they were like they're taking care of their kids their kids are happy and healthy and nobody should worry about that however unfortunately the apartment complex does have to worry about that so first off you can't rent a one bedroom apartment with five people it's not possible just because of laws and fire codes and stuff like that that apartment complex could possibly not get insurance because of this one family so in their eyes they see it basically as them pretty much going off of their lease because originally they probably maybe only had one kid or two kids and they just progressively started having kids and started adding to it also the thing that bothers me about this in my opinion is that the father is not like it seems like every single job they try to like tell him he can do he's like no no i i don't want i don't want to um you know take away from my personal life which is understandable like i get it like you don't want to take away from your family's life but also you have to remember that your family is about to be homeless because they decided clout and a little bit of money sprinkled in over the safe home or the safe roof that they were under and able to afford people need to realize that there's laws in place for a reason so when you go out and you broadcast a certain thing you're doing and it's illegal people are going to call you out for it and that right there tells you all you need to know about the parents they chose to put this online without having knowledge of the laws now they're going to be homeless now they have to start all over again now if they don't get a job then that tells you what kind of parents they are as well or if they don't sell that ps5 to or whatever else material things they have in order to buy a house for their kids that tells you all you need to know now also the mother is pregnant and a lot of people are like well, why does she keep having kids like you know but at the end of the day that doesn't even matter because it's none, nobody's business how many kids somebody has but it is people's business when you're not providing for those children you made if that man wasn't in that household that woman would take that man to court and he would have to pay thousands of dollars regardless of his his financial situation but have you guys heard about this family and have you heard that they're about to get evicted because they basically broke, broke the law and how do you feel about it as somebody that i believe fully we should always protect our children and i believe fully that these children are being protected and cared for does that do you guys feel like that kind of takes away from the fact that they broke the law at all just wondering 
something crazy that I am surprised I haven't seen a video about when it comes to that family that everybody's talking about that has five, six kids living in a one bedroom. The kids sleep on the floor in the living room. You know who I'm talking about. I'm sure you've seen the videos. <laughs> something that I haven't seen people talk about is the fact that they are going to be receiving hundreds to thousands of dollars from the TikTok creator fund alone based off of their videos going viral now. I just watched a video of a woman talking about how people that bought things off of their registry are st stupid basically because they have poor management with their resources that they do have and I agree with all the critiques about this family as it is like your children should not be sleeping next to your front door on foam pads on the floor while you sleep in your comfortable bed with a door in the bedroom you shouldn't be actively trying to procreate when you don't have the resources for adequate space and privacy for the kids that you do have all of that obviously i agree with but you guys the more that you talk about these people and the more videos you make talking about them the more money they are making from us as somebody whose account is monetized through the creator fund and i'm assuming theirs is as well because they have over ten thousand followers they make videos that are over a minute long the views that they're the money per views that they're making on that is probably anywhere from you know 20 cents to two dollars i i don't know what their like algorithm is but say you know on average they get a dollar per thousand qualified views each of their videos have over a million views that's like around a thousand dollars per video they also tagged their location as being portland oregon um as somebody who is actively looking at the real estate market in portland because we're considering moving to the pacific northwest a one bedroom apartment in portland cannot be more than a thousand dollars a month so regardless of if they were making this amount of money before people started blowing them up they probably weren't you know but now that they're blowing up the creator fund pays out on the 15th of each month so i'm sure that they have thousands of dollars waiting in their little balance waiting to be cashed out on november 15th and even if their RPM is low, I'm sure they have at least several months worth of rent waiting for them in the creator fund. It's time to see what they do with that. I I know that the dad is like in their live talking about all the excuses of why he can't work. Um, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Weak, weak behavior. Like that's ugh. But assuming that they are going to be getting a large sum of money from the creator fund in a couple weeks let's see if they get their kids bets <laughs> let's see if they move to a slightly larger apartment because absolutely zero sympathy should be felt for grown adults who cannot manage large sums of money coming in for them in desperate times which they say they are and i know a lot of people don't know about the creator fund and how much it pays um and like don't even think about that aspect if you're not somebody that like creates content on tiktok but as somebody who does get paid from the creator fund and from views like that trust me when i tell you they are about to have a large amount of money coming to them so let's see what they do with it <laughs> i'm so tired of seeing people get huge huge platforms from being mediocre human beings and mediocre parents these are not the people that we should be supporting with our views and with our time and attention. Our time and attention is giving them money, which for their children's sake, I hope they use wisely. But in general, the attention that we're giving to them and blowing their videos up is giving mediocre people the opportunity to be influencers. <laughs> so I'm going to end this on a positive note and say I hope that they take the money that they're going to be earning from social media and use it to turn around their situation for the sake of their children and their new baby. And I also hope that they take the advice of one of the millions of people commenting and hop on some form of birth control <laughs> because it's absolutely absurd to continue bringing life into a situation like this when you have the choice not to. And if you're really too selfish to not want to take some form of precaution you're really selfish if you can't just practice abstinence
for the sake of your living children. Period. That's all I have to say. Bye. So I just spent the last few hours of my life watching every single video on the Resilient Jenkins account. And if you guys know me, you know that I've had videos go viral about talking about the way that like all um, discourse about whether or not poor people should have kids if the kids are being born into poverty becomes eugenics discourse eventually because when you stop to, when you look at it at the macro and not like the individual, it, it's a much more difficult conversation about like sex education and healthcare and reproductive care, blah, 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 blah. But after watching every video on that account, it's kind of like an unstoppable force meets an unmovable object for me because it's it's the the terrible rhetoric of children in poverty and the way that we talk about that versus like the evil of like family vloggers and family vlogging accounts. Um, I have a lot of general thoughts. For one, um, my mutual uh, Shahim, uh, Shahim, Shahim. Um, made a video where they were talking about the way in which like we hate poor people and yeah factually we hate poor people like it's America come on guys like don't don't let don't lose the forest for the trees we love bashing poor people um, part of the reason this is even as big of a thing it is as it is is not because y'all like care about the kids it's because it's like so easy to do to hop on here and make a video judging them I like I know like it's like it's we we like to take groups of poor people and then put them on the spectacle and we take like take the worst of them right and then use that as like an example. But on the other hand, there's so many goddamn red flags in that resilient Jenkins family thing. Um, their Amazon wish list sold out, but they need to put goddamn beds on that wish list. Put beds on the wish list. Move your shit out. Uh, I know a lot of people were mad about the PS5. They could, in theory, sell the PS5, but it also, based on looking entirely through their account, seems as if they had the PS5 um, before they, like became a big family like because they met in 2020 and he already had one kid and she had two kids i think another like sad element that was taken out is that like she's like a domestic violence victim like the first husband that's why there's like not child support or that other father's not around like she's a domestic violence victim um secondly uh just on some uh, black people to black people if you're not black close your ears go la la la, la for this uh the man mr jenkins get a job bro i i like it, it feels so harsh to say but like he, he's he's a very specific type of guy and i'm i understand what the job market could be like and what it's like to find work but they have an address and i was looking at it and he's like doing gig work and hustling and he's got big plans you know like the people you remember the whole like who do, who tf did i marry where it's like this guy actually has big entrepreneurial plans it's like ah dude just go work for the post office and provide for those kids go get a job with benefits um go work for waste management go get like a job that has like a union behind it there's some um low barrier of entry jobs that would pay a lot just go work for the post office go get a post office job i think they are in goddamn portland go do waste management go get a portland uh go get a government job go get a government job don't try to like use tiktok to hustle like please 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 go get a government job um it'll go a long way you don't need a degree for a lot of government like jobs and they're a lot more secure you can work them for multiple years get big benefits um uh she's a red flag in the fact that she i think she pre-planned wanting to have six kids in the first place uh so like while most of the time a lot of the like <sighs> poor people having kids discourse uh, there's a lot of other things that she does explicitly just like have a dream of having six kids no matter the circumstances because she believes that she can raise them all um, you know I, and I also like want to say this real quick just as a quick side note I'm saying this is a very tired video I grew up in, I grew up in poverty I you know I dealt with homelessness as a kid my mom would send me to live with other people and then when she got more stable would bring me back there's times where I was more stable there's times where I lived with random people there was time even like the latter half of my senior year my uh, summer of like high school I lived with like her at the time ex-boyfriend in an apartment it was just like me and him so like I understand what it's like to be in these like weird deeply uncomfortable like why am I here situations so I'm speaking on this from someone who has like this very specific trauma of poverty and stuff and I'm like you know I have nothing but empathy for those kids and stuff but like we're yelling at them for the sake of the like algorithm but also like they they're not making wise choices 
they're they're making like explicitly like oh these are like it's not like a someone needs to take the kids away from situation, but we shouldn't be like feeding into this family vlog account. We just need to get those kids some beds, get that man a job, and they need to stop posting. Uh, you know, I feel very complicated about it because it's like I still think that we're yelling. This this is as big as it is because we love this. We love it when poor people are bad, so that we can go, yeah, see, this is blah 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 blah. But like. They're fucking up. <laughs> They're fucking up a little bit. Like it, it's it's um it's not like a neutral decision. They are uh, some weird things are happening. That I just, you just can't trust anyone who's turning their kids into content. Even if like the motivation is to make more money for the kids, like turning your kids into content is like. E Yo, so I've been reading comments like this and I'm like, what is going on? So I start reading all the comments, right? And they're saying that on live, she said she's punishing them because they broke their bed, their original bed. So she just was like, I'm not getting you another bed. And then also the husband is like rolling up and smoking weed on live. What? Like, it's cool if you want to smoke weed. I don't hate on people smoking pot. I don't give a fuck. But to have your kids sleeping on the floor on foam mattresses while you have money for weed? Excuse me? And then on top of that, their Amazon store has things for the husband, like a keypad cleaner and like all these like other like little things. But really, like, where's all the stuff that you need to make your kids living space livable? So then today they post this video about like um, all these Amazon gifts that people are buying them. So it's like everybody's enabling this behavior. She's exploiting her children. People are helping her. And all they're going to do is get all this free stuff. And at the end of the day, that's not going to change their perception about their kids not being first. So hopefully people get the picture and fucking stop with this shit and let the family figure it out on their own because that's what they need to do. Pets not being taken care of. They got fleas. I know a lot of y'all only care about the pets. Them pets ain't been to the vet. Do y'all remember what I said about why my daddy hates being a landlord? Because of the wear and tear on the property, especially in an overcrowding situation. When people move in who aren't on the lease, you end up looking at things like fleet infestations. Those are real. Y'all used to it being water bugs, cockroaches, mice. Fleas can infest the property too. She has lice. In order to re-rent that, a landlord has to do a lot to the unit to fix it up. Oh my god. 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 Oh my Okay, so all of you guys are probably very aware of the Jenkins family, the one with the one bedroom apartment where there's like six people and they're about to have a baby. Let me tell you why CPS most likely will get involved. Coming as somebody who is a prior foster kid within the foster care system, there is a list of requirements specifically for the state of Oregon and the United States as a whole in order to have safe living conditions for your children. Let me explain to you why they will get involved and they will probably get their kids taken away at least temporarily. When you are in foster care, okay, a court mandated situation, they will tell you that you have to meet specific guidelines in order to get your children to be able to live with you. And the reality is, is if you don't meet these requirements, oftentimes your kids cannot come home. It is a straight fact. When I was in foster care, the children all had to have their own beds, physical beds, not a foam mattress on the floor because she, they had their kids on a mattress in the kitchen. Okay. Like on a foam pad that does not count as a mattress. You need a physical mattress okay and this just really grinds my gears because I've been in a position right not only as a foster kid but I have been in the position where we have been in a tight living situation but I always made sure that my kids had mattresses and they were on beds like on a physical bed off the floor they were never on the floor like this girl does not have a it's not a clean situation. This isn't like a safe situation for kids. She's had in multiple instances of like lice that is never ending evidently, all kinds of stuff. Here is where I want to show you the requirements for the state of Oregon where she's at, I believe. This is Google. 
This is Oregon, Oregon loss. For, this is why I think that CPS will probably get involved. Okay, number one, space. A one-bedroom apartment for six people going on seven is not going to work. There should be enough space for each person in the household, okay? Ideally, there should be at least two bedrooms. Two bedrooms, minimum, a two-bedroom apartment, okay? Windows. Windows should be able to be open, provide natural light and ventilation. The problem is, is they have their kids in the living room, and it becomes a safety concern because your kid can open the door, go outside. There's a whole bunch of stuff that comes into this. So like they do not have a safe setup at all. Furnishings, there should be safe age appropriate furnishings in good repair for each child. This includes a bed, a bed or a clean mattress, mattress. Nowhere in that video does it show that they're on mattresses. They're on fucking foam pads in the kitchen on the floor. Makes absolutely no sense. As a mother, hold on. As a mother, you have a king size mattress for you and your partner. And you're going to sit there and put your kid on a foam pad in the kitchen. Are you, are you kidding me? The other things are, here's the other. Furnishings, right? They should also be a private dresser or similar storage area for the child's belongings. You have four children. So each child ideally should have belongings for each child. I'm sorry, should have a storage area for each child. Four. Okay, clearly they do not have that going on. Here's the other thing. Safety. The home should have a safe heating system, working smoke alarm in each bedroom where a child sleeps, working carbon monoxide. There should be adequate safeguards operating around fireplaces, wood stoves, other heating systems. Okay, so here's the deal. The problem I foresee is that just alone for the furnishings, she's probably going to get CPS called on her if she hasn't already. Because your child has to have those things. It's just a basic functioning element in life. And it doesn't seem like she very much cares about the opinions of other people. But she put herself out there on the internet to be judged. You know what I mean? Like once it's out there, it's out there. And it's never going away. And all of her stuff is starting to resurface from back even back 2022. Other creators on this platform have talked about the fact that her Amazon wish list has shit for her filming TikToks. Like why do you need stuff? This isn't about you, honey. This is about your kids. Everyone on the, why, are, why is everyone else on the internet more concerned for your kids than you are? Because it seems like that we're not coming from a place of we hate you we're angry for those kids people are advocating for your kids and it seems like that you don't even want to advocate for your own children like if i was you i like i'm sorry like if you're in over your head you need to say it it's okay like honestly it's okay and i'm not judging you i'm saying as a parent i see that there's some serious concerns going on i Personally, if I was you as the mother, I would ask for help. Ask for help and prevent something before somebody steps in and does it for you because that's the route you're going if you continue down this path. Like, it doesn't get better. Like, I don't think you understand this. Like, you have dug a hole. You physically dug a hole and now it's going to keep getting worse and worse. And you're progressively posting the same kind of content over and over again. You have a PlayStation 5 and LED lighting in your, your husband's room. But yet you're not doing the same thing for your own kids. Like that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Like I get kids can be unplanned because trust me, both of my kids were not planned. I 100% I understand what that's like. But you're putting your kids in a worse predicament than you are if you were to actually go out and do that. So... My personal thought on this is just based off of the basic Oregon guidelines where you look at what a court would request of what they would request for any child. I wouldn't be surprised if they temporarily lose custody until they find a different living situation and, and get their home in check before somebody else comes in because it's a clear code violation and then there's enough people online who have seen this, right? I mean, look at the people that were living out of a storage unit that ended up going into a tent because they were they kept posting about the fact that they were 
in a storage unit, at some point that landlord is going to have to intervene and go, mm, you know what, this ain't cutting it because then they don't get their insurance funding, funding because it becomes a fire hazard. Like there's a lot of shit that can come from this as a repercussion. So I really hope for the kid's sake that she can get it together because trust me, it, it doesn't, it, once the law gets involved, like it ain't, trust me, it's not going to work. My theory on the resilient Jenkins and why they won't get their kids any beds. So I was on, don't mind the poop stains up there. It's not poop. Um, I was on her live and so many people were asking her, why don't you get your kids beds, right? And she was not answering these questions. She even made it very clear. She said, we will not be answering any questions about our sleeping situation, about the kids' beds, or about why we have a room. We will not be addressing this ever. People on the live were also trying to give her man advice. He's 35 years old, by the way, and all that he does is side gigs like DoorDash, Uber Eats, and that type of stuff. They were trying to give him advice on what kind of jobs he could get, how he could better himself in life, and he was just making excuses for everything and saying that, oh, he doesn't want to get a w-2 job baby you have six kids um anyway so my theory is that these people do not want to get an official job and they do not want to buy physical beds for their kids because they are fully relying on government assistance you cannot tell me that this man works every single day of his life she claims doing side gigs and is supporting them like there's no way in this economy so i have a feeling and this is just a theory that they possibly rely on housing food stamps and whatever other kind of assistance you can get like very heavily and there's nothing wrong with that nothing at all but the problem is when you are refusing to better your life when you're refusing to give your kids a better living situation so that you can sit on your ass all day so that you don't have to get a real job because you want to work when you want to work like that's the problem right there that makes you selfish you are not putting your kids best interests first you're keeping them in a one bed so that you have to pay minimal rent you're not getting them actual physical beds so if welfare comes snooping around they don't have to ask sir why do you have seven people in a one bedroom apartment and then you lose your housing you don't want a w-2 job because then you have to report it to the food stamp people and then you don't get the same amount of food stamps that you get from not working a real job like this is a theory but it's a very strong theory because why else would you not get your children physical beds and then you straight up tell the chat we will not be addressing why the kids don't have beds I don't know so I made sure to post videos and thoughts from all over the spectrum. I just hope the best for those kids. This is just all around a really sad situation and an example of two very irresponsible parents. And as another creator had mentioned, this does bleed into the firestorm. That is the unethical side of family vlogging and basically using kids for virality and clout. Like this seems to be the new hustle for people like this. Anyway, y'all can let us know what you think. In the comment section below, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video for the algorithm. And we'll see you in the next one.